of the oldest carols in the world, and it's real pretty too, isn't it? And so is this next one, Silently Falling Snow. a song that was first sung in Austria hundreds of years ago, but which today is sung every Christmas everywhere by everybody. Silent Night. Since Christmas is a joyous holiday celebrated by children in all parts of the world, many of the Christmas stories that we know so well originally came from other lands. And one such story is The Fir Tree by Hans Christian Andersen, which comes to us from Denmark, a country of happy people in the northern part of Europe. Out in the woods, there once stood a nice little fir tree. The place he had was a very good one. The sun shone on him, and he had plenty of fresh air. But the little fir tree did not think of the warm sun and the fresh air. He did not care for the little peasant children that ran about and prattled when they were in the woods looking for wild strawberries. There was just one thing the little tree cared about. He wanted to be a grown-up tree. At the end of a year, he had shot up a good deal, and after another year, he was even taller. Oh, if I were only as tall as the others are, he sighed, looking at the trees that grew around him. Then I would be able to spread out my branches with the tops looking into the wide world. Then would the birds build nests among my branches. And when there was a breeze, I could bend with as much stateliness as the others. In winter, when the snow lay glittering on the ground, a hare would often come leaping along and jump right over the little tree. Oh, that made him so angry. But two winters passed, and in the third, the tree was so large that the hare had to go round it. When Christmas came, quite young trees were cut down. Some were not even as large or as old as the fir tree. These young trees, and they were always the finest looking, were laid on carts, and horses drew them out of the wood. Where are they going, asked the fir tree. They are not taller than I am. One, in fact, was considerably shorter. Where are they being taken? We know, we know, chirped the sparrows. We have peeped in at the windows in the town below. We know where they were taken. The greatest splendor and the greatest magnificence one can imagine await them. We peeped through the windows and saw them planted in the middle of a warm room and decorated with the most splendid things, with gilded apples, with gingerbread, with toys, and many hundreds of lights. And then, asked the fir tree, trembling in every bough, and then, what happened then? We did not see anything more, said the sparrows, but it was wondrously beautiful. I would like to know if I am destined for so glorious a career, cried the tree. I am now tall, and my branches spread like the ones that were carried off last year. Oh, if I were already on the cart. 
If I were only in the warm room with all the splendor and magnificence. So the tree grew and grew and was green both winter and summer. People that saw him said, what a fine tree. And toward Christmas, he was one of the first that was cut down. The axe struck deep into the very pith. The tree fell to the earth with a sigh. He could not think of happiness, for he was sorrowful at being separated from his home, from the place where he had sprung up. The tree only came to himself when he was unloaded in a courtyard and heard a man say, that one is splendid. Then two servants came and carried him into a large and magnificent drawing room. There the fir tree was stuck upright in a cask that was filled with sand. Oh, how the tree quivered. What was to happen? Then the servants, as well as the young ladies of the house, decorated it. On one branch, they hung little nets cut out of colored paper. And each net was filled with sugar plums. And among the other boughs, gilded apples and walnuts were hung, looking as though they had grown there. And little blue and white candles were placed among the leaves. Dolls that looked for all the world like men were put among the foliage, and at the very top, a large star of gold tinsel was fixed. It was really splendid, splendid beyond description. This evening, said everyone, how it will shine this evening. Oh, thought the tree, if evening were only here. Then evening came and the candles were lighted. What brightness, what splendor. The tree trembled in every bough. Suddenly, the doors opened and a troop of children rushed in. The older persons followed quietly. The little ones stood quite still, but it was only for a moment. And then they shouted so that the whole place echoed and they danced around the tree and one present after another was pulled off. What is to happen now, thought the tree. The candles burned down to the very branches and as they burned down, they were put out one after the other. And then the children had permission to plunder the tree. They fell upon it with such joy that if it had not been fixed firmly in the cask, it would certainly have tumbled down. The whole night, the tree stood in the room. In the morning, the servant and the housemaid came in. Now the splendor will begin again, thought the fir tree. But they dragged him out of the room and up the stairs into the loft. He stayed there until one day he was taken down the stairs into the courtyard. And there, some of the merry children who had danced around him at Christmas time were playing. The youngest ran up to the tree and took off the golden star. And then the gardener's boy chopped the tree into small pieces and set fire to it. The wood flamed up splendidly. The boys played about in the courtyard and the youngest wore the gold star on his breast, which the tree had worn on the happiest evening of his life. But all that is over now. The fir tree is gone. And the story is at an end.